Shalom. I am Rabbi Nathan David Ovich, speaking to you on behalf of the webyeshiva.org, speaking to you from Ephrat, Israel. I'm going to discuss in this short Torah lesson, this week's Torah reading, which is uh, Parsha B'Shalach. And the, the, the title of this uh, short discussion is Sometimes Patience is Not a Good Virtue. And before I get started, I want to dedicate this Torah teaching to the memory of our late daughter, Shira Rachma, whose yurt site comes up this coming Wednesday. Her yurt site coming up at this time of the year, always at this Parsha Vashalach, has special significance. This particular Torah reading is also known by the name, this Shabbos is known by the name of Shabbos Shira because of the song of the sea that the children of Israel sang after God did amazing miracles and opened the sea for them to cross and be able to get out of the way of the Egyptian army that was threatening to kill them. And I will this Parsha, what that Shabbos of Shabbos Shira has to do with our daughter. First, I want to just talk about the beginning of the, the Parsha, which is very interesting. It says, paro esa'am, when God, when, when, when Pharaoh sent out the Jewish people, God didn't want them to go by the land of the Philistines, Kikorahu, it was it was much closer. God was God said maybe they'll they'll they will become frightened. They'll see that the Egyptian army is wants to kill them, and they'll give up and want to go back to Egypt. Now that raises an interesting question: Why in the world? Why in the world would an entire people that has just escaped hundreds of years of slavery, of torture, where the worst possible atrocities were committed against them by Pharaoh. How could they want to go back? Why could there even be a fear that they, they would go back? So the the an insight, the answer to this question is given by uh, Rabbi Abraham Tversky of Blessed Memory, who says that when God told Moses to tell the Jewish people that he would take them out of Egypt, he said it in this, in this words. He used the words, Lachain, Amor Livnei Israel, Ani Hashem, say to the people of Israel, I am God, I will take them out of the suffering of Egypt. So Rabbi Tversky points out that the word Sivlos is similar to the Hebrew word Sablanut, patience. And he demonstrates by a, by a very interesting story how patience can sometimes get in the way of our making the right decision. He tells a story about his uh, grandfather uh, or great grandfather of Nachum of Chernobyl, who was visiting an inn, and it's customary uh, for some people at the stroke of midnight. Uh, to do what is called tikkun chatzos. They, they say a number of prayers, weeping for the destruction of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem and praying for its return. So he did this uh, the first night he was there, and the innkeeper heard this, this crying and went up to see what's happening. And he, so the Reb, Noble, Reb Nachum told him, I'm crying for the loss of Jerusalem and praying for its restoration that Mashiach will come and bring us back to Jerusalem. So the innkeeper says, does that mean when Mashiach comes, uh, we'll all go to Jerusalem? He said, yes. He said, well, what about my, you know, what about my cows and my farm and 
my little inn here, will they go too? He says, what are you worried about that for? You'll have everything you want in Jerusalem. He says, look, I've got to ask my wife. Goes home, asks his wife, tells his wife what the uh, what the rabbi said. And she said, well, what about our chickens and our farm and our goats? And, uh, and he says, well, they, they have to, we have to leave them. We'll go to Jerusalem. And he comes back and tells what his wife said. His wife said, no, she doesn't want to go. She says, instead, uh, it, it's, you know, we're having all this suffering with the, uh, uh, the Tartars killing us, everybody killing us. Send them to Jerusalem. We'll stay here in the comfort of our home with what we have. And that's that's the problem. The patience, you should, people have misguided patience. They wait too long. They're too comfortable. We are all comfortable in, in our surroundings and too comfortable to get out and make a difference. So that's the first, the first message I want to talk about. The second is the reason this... Torah reading is called uh, Parsha Shira is because of the song of the sea that was sung when the Jewish people were saved by God splitting the sea uh, and then letting the Jewish people cross and the Egyptians were drowned in the sea. And they spontaneously sang this song. And the song, song starts out with Oz Yashu, Shem and Yisrael, Shira Azor Shem. It doesn't start out first recounting all the things that happened. It starts out by recounting that all of this is due to God, praising the exalted God. And then after it goes into the details of, of what has happened. A, a great revelation occurred at the, the banks of the sea when the sea was splitting. The revelation that was seen there was seen by everybody of, of the grandeur of God as showing that there is nothing in the world besides God, that God controls everything. And for the first time, the Jewish people realized that all of the suffering that they had been going through for these years, hundreds of years of slavery and, and horrible things that were happening to them, they were all worthwhile because they brought them to this point. And they recognized the, the importance of the knowledge that whatever God does in this world, even though we don't see it, it is for our good. As the Gemara says, call, everything that the, the Torah does is for our good. God created the world only to do good. Painful things that happen uh, from time to time in life very painful, but the key is what God wants us to do is to recognize that everything is for good. They say that this song of the sea was the first time Shira, a song was was said thanking God for what he did. The Nativo Cholom asks a number of questions. He says, we see other songs that were said by uh, Adam, uh, by uh, uh, other people throughout Jewish history, throughout the Torah. The difference is that there are three levels of song, uh, of, of saying shir, of saying gratitude to God. One is intellectual. Yes, I see God did a good thing. I'm going to be thankful. The other is emotional, your heart. I can feel. But the third is that you feel so strongly that your very limbs are, are, are recognizing the uh, that God does everything for the good. And we, when we pray, we, we, we pray with our, with our bodies moving, saying that we should, real, we should feel with every fiber of our being the, the blessings that God gives us and the good that God gives us. Why do I mention at the beginning that the, this Parsha is connected, has a great connection to our late daughter, Shira? Because she was one of those people who, no matter what happened to her, no matter the fact that she went through many years of sickness, she always understood that everything that God does is for the good. And she didn't just think that she would express it. She would be waiting for a treatment of radiation and tell my wife, 
God is great. I have such a wonderful life. That's the amuna we need to have. That's the faith we need to have. We have to have that ability to say thank you for the bad, seemingly bad, as well as the good. Thank you. I wish everybody a wonderful Shabbat. Thank you for listening on behalf of the webyeshiva.org. Shabbat Shalom.